Super Nintendo World in Universal Studios Japan has officially grand opened to all guests. The new land, which is also coming to Universal theme parks in Hollywood, Orlando, and Singapore, features interactive elements, dining, shopping, and rides, including Mario Kart Koopa's Challenge. Let's go over how the ride system, augmented reality technology, and game mechanics work together to let you play a video game in real life on the Mario Kart ride. Super Nintendo World is now officially open in Universal Studios Japan, after being delayed multiple times due to the pandemic. Even though it just officially opened, guests have been able to experience its attractions since December through special previews. The new land features interactive activities and walkthroughs, gift shops, a quick service location, and two rides, a family ride named Yoshi's Adventure, and the land's main attraction, Mario Kart Koopa's Challenge. The Mario Kart ride is about 5 minutes long and has a height requirement of at least 42 inches tall, or 122 centimeters. You enter the attraction through Bowser's Castle. After ascending the grand staircase, you'll encounter a massive statue of Bowser himself. The queue passes through several locations within his castle, including a workshop where he's producing bad guys and other obstacles that he'll be using against you on the ride. The premise for the attraction is that Bowser has challenged Mario to a race that he designed. As a part of Team Mario, you'll be helping to defeat Bowser at his own race. The name of this course is the Universal Cup. At the end of the queue, riders are given a visor that looks like a Mario hat, which is appropriate now that we're a part of Team Mario. This ready room allows everyone time to adjust the hat to fit their head while also watching a short presentation that teaches you how the ride's game mechanics work. Next, you move on to the ride's load area and take your seat in the ride vehicle, which is modeled after Mario's cart. There are four seats per car in two rows of two. The back row is set a bit higher than the first row. This stadium seating arrangement makes it easier for those in the back to see over the heads of those in the front. Once seated, you're instructed to snap the main part of the augmented reality headset into the hat visor that you're already wearing. This main part, which is attached to the car, holds the projection unit necessary to make the AR work. There are two sets of cars that travel through the ride at the same time, along two parallel tracks. The ride vehicles have the ability to spin, using a controlled spin mechanism similar to the way the ride vehicles rotate on Men in Black Alien Attack at Universal Studios Florida. This is used at various points throughout the ride as the story calls for it. The ride itself uses several different technologies and tricks combined together to create an entirely new type of theme park attraction. The first layer are the physical sets. Much like a classic style dark ride, many of the scenes for Mario Kart feature real, tangible set pieces. Another layer on this attraction is provided by both integrated screens and projection mapping. Similar to experiences like Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway in Walt Disney World, the projections for Mario Kart are not limited to screen surfaces. This can add some dynamic life to otherwise non-moving scenery. It can also be used to create a moving road surface when projected directly towards the ground in front of you. The final layer for this attraction is provided by the Augmented Reality Visor itself. This technology adds three-dimensional imagery on top of your view, which blends into the reality around you. This is different than virtual reality, which replaces everything you see with a completely new visual image. Augmented Reality instead adds extra stuff onto what you're really seeing. And for the Mario Kart ride, it's the main way that we get to interact with the ride and play along. Throughout our five minute journey, we pass through settings taken directly from the games. Some of the scenes include Twisted Mansion, Dolphin Shoals, Grumble Volcano, and Rainbow Road. Different parts of the ride see us facing off against different characters from Team Bowser. To win the race, you'll need to earn as many points as possible by defeating enemies and collecting coins. One of the ways you earn coins is by paying attention to arrows that are displayed in AR. These arrows tell you to turn the steering wheel either to the left or to the right at various points throughout the ride. 
If all four riders in the car turn the wheel as directed, you'll drift into the turn and earn more points, increasing the chance of Team Mario winning the match. The steering wheel will not change where your ride vehicle goes though, as it does run along a predetermined track. The steering wheel also has trigger buttons on both sides. These are used for firing Koopa shells. At multiple points throughout the ride, you'll be able to collect special blocks. They will earn you 20 or more shells each time. This ammo of shells are what you use to fire at the Koopalings and at Bowser during the race. To aim your shells, you just need to turn your head. Wherever you are physically looking is where your shells will be fired when you press one of the trigger buttons. Both buttons fire the same way, so it doesn't matter which trigger you're pressing. Every time you hit a member of Team Bowser, you will earn more coins. Combine those hits with coins earned by turning when the arrows direct you, and there's a good chance you'll be able to see Mario cross the finish line first at Victory Lane. If your team's cars don't earn enough coins during this race, you'll end up getting the alternate ending where Bowser is on the first place pedestal instead. Before returning to load, you can compare your score to that of the other cars, as well as the highest scores for the day. And if you're wearing a power-up band, which is the wristband you can purchase to interact with the land, your Mario Kart score will be saved to the app and you can see a high score listings there as well. You'll also be able to earn stamps in the app for achievements on the ride, like hitting Bowser and all the Koopalings in a single race, or having the highest score in yours and the other car. Super Nintendo World may be open in Universal Studios Japan, but we still don't have opening timeframes for the other planned locations. Construction is underway for Hollywood's version, which is rumored to open in 2022. Orlando Super Nintendo World is expected to open as part of the new theme park, Epic Universe, which may not be opening until 2025. Universal Studios Singapore is also planned to get a version. That's all for now, but be sure to subscribe for more theme park news and updates. And check out our recent video for more information on Epic Universe. If you like what we do, consider joining our Patreon for exclusive podcasts and early releases. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.